I used to work as a recruiter for an arts college visiting high school photo classes. I'd been a keen amateur photographer for years, so I loved speaking at high schools and seeing the students work. But in every school and in every class, there was always that one kid whose work was so much better than mine. And to make matters worse, I was using a Leica. Oh man. But it led to the most valuable lesson I think I ever learned about photography. Here's what happened. I first worked as a media instructor at a college, which led to the job in recruiting. And being a former teacher, seeing the amazing work from students actually made me really happy, but envious. I'd often hear that the student who created the work was also a painter, that he or she didn't really know much about the technical side of photography, and sometimes they didn't even know much about using a camera. Wait, what? I had tried to learn everything I could about cameras. I studied for years how to master exposure, how to get sharp images, along with just about everything else. Yet this kid's work was on a whole other level than mine. And I had just bought my dream camera. This was back in 2012. And in 2012, for me, that camera was a Leica M9. I'd saved up, sold all my other gear, most of these high school classes were using old Pentax film cameras or some cheap digital camera, which started me thinking. Some of the most amazing photographers of all time were using gear that was pretty primitive by today's standards, yet they had produced images that I could only dream of. I could tell they all knew something that I didn't. How did their work transcend what I thought was even possible for me? I needed to find out. What I'm gonna share with you is not the easiest way to improve your photography, but if you're frustrated with your progress or you want to create work that will stand out from most other photographers, this could be for you. Full disclosure, to this day, I don't paint or draw myself, but there seemed to be something special that people who could paint or draw brought to photography. One of my favorite photographers was Saul Leiter. He called painting his first love. He painted every day before his death in 2009, and he famously said, photography is about finding things, but painting is different. It's about making something. But when I looked at his photographs, I saw something more than just the things he found. His images looked like, well, paintings. And it wasn't just Saul Leiter. There were other amazing photographers whose work also reminded me of paintings. Painters didn't seem to get caught up in the tools or gear. Now, the level of technology is very different. Uh, you don't hear people saying, his brushes and paints must have been state-of-the-art. There are technical skills required to be a painter, but the ones I met just seem to be more focused on the work itself or using their skills to convey the emotion they felt about something in a painting or, or sometimes just going with what they feel in the moment and experimenting. Even if I couldn't paint, I knew I had to at least think more like a painter or artist. The first thing I did was to start drawing inspiration from other areas besides photography. I tried to absorb as much visual art as I could. Painters whose work I like, obviously, but all types of art. I asked myself, what was it I liked about their work? And in some cases, it was the colors, the lighting, but my favorite artists seem to have this uncanny ability to create a mood or make me feel something. Good painters really seem to understand light and color. It's almost like they made light and color their tools. So rather than just getting lucky or relying on the great bokeh I could produce with my Leica, I wanted to better understand light. I wanted to learn how to harness it. I noticed that light had such a different quality depending on a lot of things. So I spent time watching the light and how it changes not only throughout the day, but how it changes throughout the entire year. And I did that for the better part of a year. Just a couple days a month, I take a few minutes throughout the day and notice how the light changed from morning to afternoon to early evening. I looked at the shadows on all types of different subjects. Do that for a year, you'll understand more about light than most other photographers. You've probably heard it said that you don't take a photograph, you make a photograph. And I hearken back to what Saul Leiter said. In photography, you find things, but you make a painting. While he was great at finding things, I, I think Saul was great at making his photographs too. 
And it was this idea to stop taking pictures and start making them that began to open my eyes. Once I understood that, I started approaching my subjects differently. I started to slow down and try to really see things first. A fully manual camera like an M9 forces you to slow down. It forces you to contemplate when you're shooting. So it helped me in learning to see. All Leica rangefinders are amazing cameras for that. But any camera system that you can operate in full manual mode will help you slow things down. So you don't think you need to go out and buy a Leica. Unless, of course, you want to be like me, then you can probably experience what I did, knowing that teenagers with much cheaper gear are producing superior work. I'll never really know how much that forced me to work harder at photography, but I'm guessing a lot. If you saw any of my other videos, you'll know that I mainly shoot urban scenes and architecture. I've had other photographers say they went to the exact same locations that I did, but the scene didn't look anything like it did in my photos, and why does it look so different? I'm not trying to document a scene or do an accurate representation of reality. If you're doing documentary work, your goal will be different, but I'd still urge you to slow down and focus on what you feel from your subject or scene and try to convey that in a photograph. Here's some work from two of my recent projects. On the one hand, we have the dreamy look where I'm trying to represent the mid-century modern idea of a bright future, kind of the American dream of the 1950s or 60s, versus the work inspired by film noir or neo-noir, which dealt with the dark side of that dream. Now, I'm not trying to say that my work is great. I, I realize it's not for everyone. And I'm still humbled by some of the student work that I've seen. But I'm always working on getting better, and one of the things I really love about photography is that you never have to stop learning or improving. I'm usually trying to tell some sort of story or create a mood or feeling, but I don't think it would have been possible without first learning better how to see. And what I mean by that, when I go to a location now, I plan around when I think the light will be ideal. I don't even take my camera out. I walk around and try to get a sense of the place and what I feel from being there. And then I think about how I might convey that feeling in a photograph. Then I try to come up with a composition. That same approach to creating that mood or feeling continues when I'm editing. But I usually wait a few weeks to edit so I can look at the image fresh and see if I've really captured what I was going for. I've had a few people reach out to me saying they're worried about changing their approach. And if you've ever felt that way yourself, you should watch this video on how to overcome doubt when creating or showing your work, which will be up, up here when it's ready. My new approach led to a whole new career for me. And if you're looking to start a series or even start selling your prints of your work, you need to watch this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you found any of this helpful, like, subscribe, and or comment. Thanks again, I'll see you next time.